Welcome to the walkthrough on our SMS broadcast product here at Call Fire. Today we'll go over what it entails to create a campaign. We'll also go over something called keywords, which is a texting product that we have, and how to analyze text records and set up auto replies and so forth. Before we begin, we have several products here at CallFire, voice broadcast, text messaging, call tracking, IVRs, and the cloud call center. The SMS broadcast is a product that sends out a text in a blast to a large list of contacts, generally from our short code 67076, which we'll dive into a little deeper in a few moments. If you don't already have an account with CallFire, we have a few different pricing options. The basic pay-as-you-go pricing is $0.05 cents per message. And we also have some monthly recurring plans that get you a better value at a high volume. The monthly plans renew automatically every 30 days by default, so you only want to take advantage of one of these if you're doing a high volume consistently. Otherwise, it's best to stick with the pay-as-you-go pricing, which again is $0.05 cents per text. To get started creating an SMS campaign, just go to callfire.com and log in. And once you log into your account, the first view that you're brought to is your broadcast view. And from here, you'll just go ahead and hit new text broadcast. Creating a text broadcast is a three-step process. It's relatively straightforward by design. The first step is going to have you compose the message. Let's type it in this box here. And you can see I have a little figure counter on the bottom. It's telling me how many characters I've used. The max for one text is 160 characters. If you go over that, it will break it up into separate texts. Now you can see up top I have a little drop down that says send from. By default, it'll send it from the short code, which is 67076. Generally speaking, if you're sending a text to a large list of people, you'd want to use the short code. You have the ability to use what's called a long code, which is a virtual number that you can purchase through CallFire. Cost of that's $3 per month on the basic pay-as-you-go pricing. The advantage to a long code is it gives you a unique number that the recipient of the text will see from as opposed to our short code. If you're sending a broadcast to a large list of contacts, really anything over a couple hundred, generally speaking, it's best to use a short code because if you use a long code, you have to maintain a one-to-one -one ratio. That means for every text that you send out, you have to get a text back. So in the vast majority of cases, that's not really a plausible solution because you can't guarantee that you'll get a text back for every text that you send. So again, generally speaking, it's best to use a short code. However, you do have the option to use a long code. A long code will cost you an additional $3 per month for the farm. So I'll keep it on the short code here. Once you have your message typed out, you'll hit next. We'll take you to the contacts section. This is where you're going to upload the list of phone numbers that you're going to send the blast to. So the most common way is to do just that to upload. You click upload here. You can also choose from an existing list on your account. You can add a single contact phone number stored on your account. Or you can filter from a previous campaign. I'm going to upload a list for this campaign. Before I do that, I'll bring it up here. You can see this is a standard Excel file, CSV rather. I've got some information on here. The only real pertinent information for the system to send the text out is that all the phone numbers are in one column here. That's to be Excel or CSV less than 10 megabytes. So once you have your file ready in CallFire, you click Upload List. You're going to give it a name. Then you'll choose it from where it's stored in your computer. Select it and then hit continue. 
Now, call fire is going to validate the list. The first step is going to have you name the column. So I'm going to click manually name columns, hit continue. And the only thing I'm doing here is ensuring that the column with the phone numbers that I want to send the text to is labeled home phone. Now, obviously, these are going to be mobile phone numbers because we're sending a text blast. I'm still naming this column home phone because that's pointing the system to send the message to the numbers in this column. So to reiterate, the column that has the phone numbers that you want to send the message to, you're going to make sure is named home phone. The rest we can keep at default. We'll hit continue. Callfire is also going to check my list for invalid numbers, for duplicates, and for existing contacts. You can see here it says your new list contains three numbers associated with existing contacts. I'll just go ahead and create new. That's fine. Hit continue. <clears throat> it's going to have me agree to the terms, continue, and then complete upload. So there's my list ready to go. Now from here, I can still add more contacts if need be. Just hit add contacts again. I'll go ahead and hit next, and that's going to take me to the third step, which is the settings. It's always good to give your broadcasts a unique name. It'll look a little bit cleaner on your dashboard. I can schedule this campaign to run at a later date and time if I don't want to run it right now. If it's a very large campaign, I can do an advanced scheduling. Generally speaking, with a text message broadcast, you wouldn't be using advanced scheduling because the campaign will send out relatively quick. Or I can go ahead and click Start Immediately and click Finalize. That's going to take me to a screen where one of the options is Visit Campaign Dashboard. And we can see that campaign that I just created is now in a running state. So we'll let that finish up. While we're waiting on that, on the blue control panel on the left side here, we have an option here for keywords. I'll go ahead and click that. A keyword is a word that people would text into a short code, and the owner of the word would get all the text. So for example, my keyword is Dane. Anytime someone texts Dane to our short code 67076, those texts go to me. So I click keywords and click on my keywords. I can see a graph of <clears throat> the incoming text. I can get all the, the numbers that have texted me. I can also set up an auto reply. Anytime someone texts in the day, I have an automatic reply here that they're going to get this text back from me. Here is my special for the day, two for one. And I can set up different auto replies here with different sub trigger words. So if I wanted someone to text Dane space one, I could have a different auto reply and the trigger would be one. I'd give them a different message. That's a good way to manage your auto replies if you want to send out different ones for different situations. I can also export the, the text records here. The cool thing about a keyword is when someone texts in your keyword, it stashes their phone number and they've given you consent to text them back. So you could then take these numbers and upload it to an SMS broadcast and send them back a text. We'll go back to our broadcast view. We can see that that campaign is now finished, 100% done. I'll click on the title. Go ahead and go to the text records. We got a carrier error because these are all virtual numbers. If these were actual cell phones, this would show us sent. Visualize. Go back to my context if I wanted to add more contacts, settings, and I can change this as well. So in terms of getting further help, we have support from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Friday, and 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday. Just call us at 1-877-897-3473. We also have email support, support at callfire.com, and live chat help from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday Pacific time. So we hope that you found this helpful. That will conclude today's webinar on the SMS broadcast. Enjoy the rest of your day.